Hey guys, uh, this video is on the cosine rule, uh, which is used to solve spherical triangle problems. All right, especially when we do the great circle sailing problems, we use the cosine rule. And uh, although I have put up videos where I've shown you how to calculate the uh, great circle sailing problems using the cosine rule, I wanted to make a separate video which explains the cosine rule specifically and how to apply it in grid circle sailing problems all right so the cosine rule is based on uh, two main rules uh, where if you have a spherical triangle as you can see here this is a spherical triangle which comprises of uh, arcs of three grid circles and the intersection of these three arcs gives you a spherical triangle so if you have any two sides so the first rule here if you have any two sides and the included angle given to you then you can find out the rest of the sides and the angles using the cosine rule. So for example, if uh, angle A here is given to you and the side C and B is also given to you. So side C and B and the angle included between them is A, right? Is given to you, you can find out the rest of the sides and angles. All right, similarly, if angle or uh, so let me erase this otherwise you guys will get confused so let me take the so if you think about it from another example if sides b and a or a and b is given to you and what's the included angle between them it's angle c if this angle and the sides a and b are given to you then you should be able to calculate the rest of the angles and sides so that's rule one uh, rule two is when all the three sides of the spherical triangle are known you can find out the rest of the angles. It's pretty straightforward. All right, so if all the three sides are given to you, you can find out the rest of the angles as well. So cosine rule, let's go back to the example where uh, the included angle was A and the sides given to you was uh, side B and C. So the formula of the cosine rule becomes, you put the included angle first, cos A, then you put the side opposite to it which is not given to you which is a small a right so first you put the included angle then you put the side opposite to the included angle which is a cos of that side minus the remaining two sides cos b and cos c these two sides will be given to you in the equation and then the cos b and cos c you make it sine b and sine c when you put the denominator. So the two sides which are here, cos b and cos c, also come here. That's the cosine rule. So let me let me repeat it again, and I'll erase all this for you so that you can understand it. So just in case if I was not very clear, so the cosine rule. First, you put the included angle which is given to you, cos of a, in this case then you put this side opposite to it cos a small side small a minus cos of b and c these are the sides given to you and then the same sides b and c come in the denominator as well but they become sine c b and c so you can always remember this rule put the included angle first then put the side opposite to it then put the remaining two sides the product of the remaining two sides of the cos and then the same two sides come down in the denominator as well so let's take an example for better understanding so in this example in spherical triangle a b and c let's take the same one above if angle a is given to you as 57 degrees and the sides are given as b 100 degrees and c is 64 degrees and why have put a stroke across c is to distinguish it from the capital angle C. So if I didn't do that, you won't be able to understand whether it's a small C or big C. Sometimes it get confusing, right? So to denote the side C, I just put a stroke through it so that you guys don't get confused between the angle C and the side C. All right, so if we've got angle A as 57 degrees and the sides B and C given to you, that means you can use the cosine rules because the included angle is given to you between the sides B and C the included angle A is given to you. So using this cosine rule <coughs> above, let's say we have to find the value of side A and angle B. 
let's start with finding the side value of side a first so use the cosine rule put cos a which equals cos a minus cos b and cos c divided by sine b and sine c i've shown you how to use the or how to write down the cosine formula always put the include angle first then the side opposite to it this is not given to you of course but then the sides which are given to you cos b and c next and then the same two sides come down as sine b and c then of course in this case here this can also be written as so if i take these ones here crossover so we have cos a minus cos b times cos c equal to cos a times sin b and sin c now because we want to keep our unknown on one side and our unknown is a here b and c a and b and c is given to us we keep our unknown to the one side and then take the known towards the knowns right so let's keep our knowns to one side and unknown to the other so then this equation becomes cos a equals cos a times sin b times sin c and because this was a negative which is when it goes on to the other side becomes a positive becomes cos b times cos c in other words if i put the values now cos a equals cos 57 times sin 100 times sin 64 plus cos 100 times cos 64 put the values in the calculator and this is what you should be getting in the calculator as i have retain the negative signs because it's important keep following my prompts you should be getting answers similar to mine i have used only five decimal figures after the decimal you can use more if you want but five is good enough for calculations all right don't use two because then it, the accuracy is a bit affected try to use four or five numbers there's no specific numbers the more numbers you use after the decimal the more accurate it is but then of course you can't write 10 or 12 numbers every time so just keep it to about five and then keep following my prompts you should be getting cos a equals as 0.40596 inverse of the cos value should be getting angle a as 66 degrees 2.9 so the value of cos 57 times sin 100 sin 64 is this year then cos 100 times cos 64 is this year retain the signs as you would be getting them in the calculator and eventually you should land up there all right now if i have to find capital angle b here use this capital angle b here if i have to find this right so although my the side next to it is not given to you a is not given to you but you have calculated a right so a you again have a and c and you have the included angle b here so you can use the cosine rule right you just calculated a so a was not given to you originally in the question but you calculated a and now you've got the side a and c and you've got the angle included between them so similarly this time you the included angle becomes angle b cos b equals the side opposite to it which is cos b minus cos a times cos c divided by sin a times sin c so the same two sides a and c come down in the denominator as well put in the values as i have follow the prompts i have put in the values retain the negative signs if you are getting any negative signs keep following my values you can see here i have written them down for you to follow it step by step Finally, you should come down to this step here where cos b equals minus 0 0.42807. Put cos inverse of 0 0.42807, negative sign included, and you should be getting b is 115 degrees 20.7. Alright, so this was just an example to show you how to use the cosine rules to calculate or solve the spherical triangle. We use this normally for grade circle and composite grade circle sailing questions. We also have something called Napier's rules which we use for spherical triangle and Napier's rules is, my, is in my next video. So search for my next video for Napier's rules. But this video is specifically for cosine rule only. And uh, uh, remember this two rules. If the two sides and the angle included between them is given to you, you can use the cosine rule. Otherwise you can't. And if it is given to you, then you can find out the rest of the sides in the angle. And of course, if all the three sides are given to you, then also you can use the cosine rule and you can use them. To find the rest of the angles all right thanks guys see you soon